a quote to start, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage, Aninin. Good day, Professor Limpstadt, WRJ President Sarah Charney, and WRJ friends and family around the globe. My name is Roseanne Selfon, and I had the good fortune to serve as WRJ President from 2005 to 2009. Currently, I chair a committee of 11 diverse women who were selected to literally select this year's WRJ Dr. Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award honoree. Thank you, ladies, for your time and attention in this endeavor. Additionally, I want to take a moment to thank Rabbi David Saperstein for his enduring commitment to WRJ and his aid in connecting WRJ and the ambassador. Just as our beloved Jane Evans guided and mentored hundreds if not thousands of women to find their authentic paths and seek the highest levels of educational and professional realization possible at given times, so our nominee today has served to inspire and guide women and men alike to speak truth to power and never remain silent at the margins. Our Jane spoke with careful forethought, casting her wisdom generously wide, but she also listened. Professor Lipstadt's students often regale stories of her sharing, her caring, and her listening, along with her inspiring them to build lives of courage and integrity. Before I speak more about today's honoree, Let's hear a little bit more about Jane Evans. As a young girl in the early 20th century, Jane Evans was raised by her father and as a result, grew up with goals and skills unique for women of the times. She played more with tools than dolls and eventually studied medicine, math, music, aeronautics, architecture, art and was a skilled equestrian. Jane Evans could have done just about anything. As the decorating director for a department store in St. Louis, her life path seemed destined for anything but world jewelry. But like so often happens, fate would intervene and help redefine the very history of women in Reform Judaism forever. When I am asked about becoming involved in Jewish life, I do have to confess that uh, I had a different career in mind. I was in the field of art and I was teaching. Unbeknown to me, one of my students was the then president of the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods. And uh, when a vacancy occurred in the directorship, she invited me to become the director of the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods on a temporary basis, but the temporary basis became a life. Jane didn't just step into her new position, she transformed it, becoming the first full-time director of what was then the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods in 1933, a position she would hold for the next 43 years. From women's rights, to civil rights, to labor law, to her advocacy for the ordination of women rabbis, Jane Evans' pursuit of justice and equality was relentless. I thought that both congregations, education, and the entire breadth of the rabbinic responsibilities would be enormously enhanced by women as well as men being our teachers. From the evolution of the Jewish Braille Institute to the creation of NIFTI, from promoting resolutions protesting child labor to pioneering Judaica shops in our synagogues to promoting access to birth control, from the World Union for Progressive Judaism to resettling Holocaust survivors, to the creation of the United Nations, 
to the union's move from Cincinnati to New York, Jane Evans' counsel, her impact, her footprint, knew no boundaries. And as a result, neither did the women of NFTS or of today's WRJ. She was promoting youth engagement and social justice long before it was fashionable or popular, and generations of reformed Jewish women have followed her lead. At 20 years old, Jane designed a fan blade called the Silver Swan that was adapted for motorboat engines, a design that is still the industry standard today. At 80, she learned Hebrew, and at 94, she was still piloting her boat. She was anything but typical. She was a visionary who still serves as an inspiration for women to think independently and to think out loud. Sisters laugh and sisters cry. Sisters stand strong by and by. Sister, oh my sister. If you ever wonder what's on the horizon for Reform Judaism, you would do well to take a look at the women of Reform Judaism. The women of Reform Judaism were honored at the 2013 Biennial in San Diego with the Reform Movement's highest recognition as they celebrated their centennial year. And while watching these proud Jewish women celebrating together, you just couldn't help but think that ultimately, this was Jane Evans' legacy. All I can say is I am convinced that Reform Judaism will continue to expand. It is the Judaism, not just of the current or the past, but very definitively of the future. Today, in the spirit of all that Jane valued, it is my honor to introduce our 2022 Evans Award recipient, Ambassador Dr. Deborah Lipstadt, Special Envoy for Monitoring and Combating Anti-Semitism, as appointed by President Joe Biden, confirmed by the Senate of the United States, and officially sworn into this position on May 3rd this year. To speak of Dr. Lipstadt is to refer to a woman of substance who adds significant value to our world and works tirelessly to create or do something that makes a difference and inspires others. Webster's Dictionary notes that a person of substance, I quote, is educated and intelligent, manages business or personal and professional well, brings value to relationships, has influence and personal power. Additionally, Webster's adds, being a woman of substance suggests that one has learned how to endure life's challenges and continues to rise above them. It means taking those life lessons and thinking, what can I learn from this? Or how can I share this experience to help someone else? Women of substance give meaning to our lives as they live with purpose and recognize their personal power. These traits define Ambassador Lipstadt, who was born in New York City, the middle child of an engaged Jewish family who participated in synagogue life. She spent summers at Camp Mossad. She was an exchange student in Israel during the Six Day War. After receiving her BA in American History from City College of New York, she enrolled at Brandeis where she completed her master's and PhD in Near Eastern and Judaic Studies. Eventually, Dr. Lipstadt became the DeRote Professor of Modern Jewish History and Holocaust Studies at Emory University. She helped create and head the Institute for Jewish Studies at Emory. Within the university setting, Ambassador Lipstadt has received numerous teaching awards, including Emory's Student Government Association's Award for being the teacher most likely to motivate students to learn about new and unfamiliar topics. She was also awarded the Emory Williams Award for her courses on modern Jewish and Holocaust studies. 
presented to Emory's outstanding teachers, the award is based on nominations by alumni of the professor who has had the greatest impact on them. The ambassador has published extensively. Denying the Holocaust was accorded the 1994 National Jewish Book Award. History on Trial, My Day in Court with a Holocaust Denier was awarded the 2005 National Jewish Book Award in the Holocaust category, and Anti-Semitism Here and Now, the 2019 National Jewish Book Award in Education and Jewish Identity. In 2016, a film based on history on trial, My Day in Court with a Holocaust Denier graced the big screen. Denial dramatized the case Irving versus Penguin Books Limited, in which Professor Lipstadt was sued by Holocaust denier David Irving for a libel, a case won by Penguin and the professor. As the trial concludes, the judge suggests that if Irving honestly believes his own claims, then he cannot be lying, as Lipstadt asserts. However, the judge rules for the defense, convinced of the truth of Lipstadt's portrayal of Irving as deceitful. Dr. Lipstadt, our woman of substance, is hailed for her dignified demeanor, while her legal team reminds her that despite her silence during the trial, it was her writing that countered Irving's lies and provided the basis for the victory. From a real life Hollywood story to witnessing change in our real world, Ambassador Lipstadt surprised many with the destination of her first official trip abroad by visiting Saudi Arabia before going to Israel. An optimist, she sensed an openness to change. Her role, she noted, is, and I quote, to lessen enemies to Jews. As she commented to CNN interviewer Dana Bash during a special on the topic of anti-Semitism, and I quote, Anti-Semitism will always be around. I hope I can diminish it, Dianu. Ambassador Lipstadt, it is my honor to ask you to speak to women who will be inspired by your spunk, your tenacity, as well as the wisdom and Jewish values that guide you in the challenging work you have undertaken. And may I add that you surely follow in the steps of Jane Evans. You are welcome. Thank you for that truly beautiful introduction and for this very thoughtful award. It's a great honor to be with you here tonight, albeit virtually, to accept this honor. Many of you may not know, but my professional career in the Jewish nonprofit sector started in the reform movement at NEFTI. Here I was, a young woman from an Orthodox family, working in a reform, reform program to make some money while I studied for my graduate degree. I worked and had hired as an assistant Rabbi Danny Friedlander before he had the title of rabbi. And we would often call on Debbie Friedman as a song leader for our campers and attendees. I was honored to hear that I had been chosen for the Jane Evans Award. I'm sorry to say that I didn't know Jane Evans, but let, you, let me tell you how touched I am to receive an award with her name attached to it. A Jewish female engineer, Jane was a pioneer committed to promoting human rights, including the rights of women and civil rights, to religious tolerance, and countless other pursuits of justice. I regularly speak about the interconnectedness of anti-Semitism with other forms of ha hatred in my role as special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. It's easy today to ignore the interconnectedness of Jewish causes with my other minority rights causes. Often we get swept up in caring about ourselves or our own communities. Often we are too absorbed to see that what afflicts the Jewish community frequently also afflicts others. To effectively counter anti-Semitism, it is critical that we combat all forms of hate and vice versa. A good example of this interconnectedness of hate is the conspiracy that today dominates white supremacist ideology, the great replacement theory. In the summer of 2017, as many of you remember in Charlottesville, a group of these white supremacists met, 
ostensibly to protest the removal of a statue of a Confederate general. They marched through the town and university campus, holding tiki torches and chanting, Jews will not replace us, and other Nazi-like slogans. It was a stunning example of how anti-Semitism and racism, hatred of black Americans and hatred of Jews are inexorably intertwined. The accusations by the Charlottesville organizers that Jews are behind an attempt to destroy white America have been adopted and adapted by racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, not just in America, but in Europe and other elsewhere. The interconnectedness of anti-Semitism and other forms of hate was also at the root, at, at more recently, at the heinous attack in Buffalo, as well as the shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh on a Shabbat morning to celebrate efforts to ease the path of immigrants to this country. At this point, it is widely known that hate crimes, including those that intersect with anti-Semitism, are on the rise. We see physical attacks almost daily on Jewish individuals on the streets of Brooklyn. As an aside, I have to say, too often we ignore this violence because it is committed against Jews who do not look or live like us. We see violent and hateful rhetoric on the internet directed at various minority communities around the world. We hear hateful and sometimes dangerous comments coming from world leaders whether it be Prime Minister Orban in Hungary, Supreme Leader Khamenei in Iran, or from those who are supposed to be unbiased com commissioners in parts of the UN system. This is why it is critical that governments and civil society openly and vigorously call out anti-Semitism when they see it. It must be fought not just for the sake of the welfare of their Jewish students, Jewish citizens. That alone would make the fight against anti-Semitism an important goal, but also because anti-Semitism is a threat to the stability of all societies and all governments. History has shown that there is virtually no country, irrespective of its form of government, that can thrive when it harbors deeply rooted anti-Semitism. That's the same sign of dangerous decay, moral, societal, and political decay. As Jane Evans and the WRJ know well, fighting any hatred is a deeply held Jewish tenet. WRJ has committed, been committed to this fight for over 100 years. I'm too much of a historian to think that in this position as special envoy, I'll solve the issue of anti-Semitism. But with continued efforts by organizations just like the WRJ, I'm confident that we can move the needle. Your support fills me with gratitude and fills me with resolve. And I am even more strengthened and encouraged by the knowledge that a multitude of people are hoping, and dare I say praying, for me to succeed. Thank you for this lovely honor, and even more, thank you for the critical work you do. Thank you so much. And Ambassador Lipstadt, on behalf of Women of Reform Judaism, it gives me great pleasure to present the WRJ Jane Evans Pursuit of Justice Award to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Women of Reform Judaism joins with so many others in celebrating your appointment to your position as Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. In your book, Anti-Semitism Here and Now, you describe anti-Semitism as a nefarious passion and that to ignore its contemporary manifestations would be irresponsible. Thank you for speaking, writing, and shining a light on the truth. The late Jane Evans spoke the truth, as do you, especially in uncomfortable situations. Amongst Jane's many achievements as an inventor, a contributor to the Charter of the United Nations, an advocate for peace, as executive director of the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods, now Women of Reform Judaism, she traveled throughout North America advocating for ideas that were clearly uncomfortable for the time and ahead of her time. 
She encouraged Reformed Jewish women to assume leadership roles within their congregations and communities, challenged the Reform movement to admit women to the rabbinical program at Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, advanced WRJ's social justice education and work, and served as a mentor to thousands. Jane taught us how to mobilize women to secure our rights and to lift our voices for justice. Ambassador Lipstadt, it is an honor for me to present this award to you as you embody so many qualities that Jane Evans exhibited. You are also a mentor to thousands, myself included, through your teachings and writings which educate and exhort citizens across the United States and globally to identify and name anti-Semitic behaviors and not remain silent. I am inspired by your courage and bold leadership. Our women strive to emulate leaders like you and Jane Evans, who work day in and day out to right the wrongs of our societies through education, inspiration, and action. WRJ stands ready to partner with you. We wish you much success in your role as Ambassador Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Antisemitism. Mazel tov, and may you continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honor.